So much, as, so much as I would like to do these things myself, I usually resort to the safer option of paying money to a tradesperson to do the job once and properly. Nevertheless, we maintained our interest in self-sufficiency and Schumacher's idea that small is beautiful. We believe that as a society, we've tended to get some things wrong. We overcomplicate things. Thus, when something goes wrong, it's not just a local problem, but it has repercussions all over the state or the nation or the world. How else would decisions to lend money to people in the United States on low or no incomes who have no hope of repaying it lead to a worldwide financial crisis? How else would an inadvertent closure of a gas metering tube at a power station lead rapidly to a shutdown of the whole state? I know, I used to work for the Pipelines Authority of South Australia and we were the ones who shut the, shut the metering tube. <coughs> um, whilst, thus, whilst appreciating the value of economies of scale, it seems to us that philosophically, as a nation, we should be encouraging self-sufficiency in matters of power, power generation, water capture and heating and cooling of our dwellings. And we have tried to implement such ideas in the design and creation of our house. These ideas are not really very radical, nor are they necessarily any more expensive than conventional approaches to house design and construction. A rider here. We are fortunate that we have a large block of land, which does give us more scope than perhaps you would have on an average city block. But I believe the principles can still be applied equally well in suburbia. Firstly and importantly, the house faces north. Thus in winter, the sunlight streams into the house through big windows and it penetrates right into the back of the house. We noticed when the house was nearing completion one day in June 2005, a very cold day, as only Claire can be. Painters on the outside who were painting the veranda were well rugged up against the cold. Inside, the tiler was laying, the, laying the, the, our tiled floor in his shirt sleeves. So that was, gives you an idea of how, how warm that, that uh, house can be with just, just by the sun coming through the windows. But what about the summer? Well, in summer, the sun angle is high and we have overhangs along the entire front which project far enough to keep the sun off the windows. Importantly, we have only one small west-facing window and that's in the bathroom. So uh, the fierce afternoon summer sun does not come into the main part of the house. Inside, the floor of ceramic tiles on a concrete slab form a thermal mass which has a stabilising effect on the interior temperature, be that co a cooling effect in summer or a warming effect in winter. The walls are of hebel board on a timber frame. Hebel is aerated concrete, which comes in slabs about 10 centimetres thick, and it thus in itself is a good form of insulation. Between he the hebel and the interior wall lining is more insulation, of course, and the roof space, of course, is also insulated. The effect is that on the hottest days of summer, the interior is always at least five or six degrees cooler than the outside temperature. Now, they, they may not cut much ice when the temperature outside is 42, but, uh, <laughs> but it's certainly if it's the mid-30s, it is a lot more comfortable inside the house than outside. We aug augment the passive cooling by ceiling-mounted fans like we have here. And if we really need it, we have an evaporative ducted air, cool air cooler. However, we don't turn it on very much, partly because we really don't need to, and partly to conserve water, because we must rely on our tanks. As I said, we are uh, self-sufficient in water. Our water comes entirely from the sky. That is to say, we have six tanks, each with 22,000 litres capacity, and they meet all our water needs. We have quite a large roof area, and Claire's normal rainfall is sufficient to fill them. Now there's talk of Goyd's Loan, which is, runs across the state somewhere north of Hallett. They, there's um, rumours that it's moving south. I haven't actually seen this happen, but, uh, uh, but you'll know that Goyd's Line is the cut-off point where um, sustainable farming um, should occur. And um, there is, because of global warming, there's a fe feeling that that, uh, that, that um, cut-off point should, should come further south, even as far south as Clare. Um, but I have seen arguments to say that if people uh, you know, conserve water uh, carefully, they could still get through hot summers, um, notwithstanding that, that movement. Of course, we have a solar hot water system, 
And in addition, we generate our own electricity and we have 44 solar cells mounted on our garage roof. The cells will generate up to two kilowatts per hour on a sunny day and even with cloud cover, we get about five or 600 watts. We're connected to the grid and our surplus power goes into it on what's known as a buyback scheme. As I speak, we're around about $250 in credit to the supplier. Mind you, the solar cells are not cheap, even with the government subsidy, and even less cheap now that the government's cut the subsidy. And if you made, made an, an, an install or not install decision purely on economic grounds, you'd probably not install them on an existing house, notwithstanding that the state government last year increased the buyback rate by over 150%, it's now 44 cents a kilowatt hour. But as technology is developed, I'm sure that a solar cell on every house will become more and more of a proposition, and it will mean less dependency on the centralised grid with all the problems inherent in that. As for us, here and now, philosophically, we feel that by doing our bit in power generation, we are lessening the load on the grid and in the process, helping the environment, even if only in a small way. And the price of electricity is certainly not going to fall in the future and perhaps displaying a slight tendency to avariciousness, it will make the house more attractive to a potential buyer in the at some time in the future. Janet and I sketched out the concept design of the place, then took it to an architect who had been recommended to us as being sympathetic and interested in sustainable housing. He refined our sketches, put them into a more professional format, and after some frustrations in looking for a builder, we were introduced to a local Clare man who was willing to put our ideas into practical reality. As a process, the building of the house went remarkably smoothly. Nothing was too much trouble for our builder, and he was always willing to meet us on site at short notice when we drove up from Adelaide. Those of you who have built houses or had renovations done, and I don't know how we're getting on here, but uh, sometimes dealing with builders is uh, very difficult. But uh, our, our uh, builder is, in fact, we, we're still um, remarkably close friends with, with, uh, with him and his wife. So I guess that attests to, to show how, uh, you know, how smoothly the process went. And so we now enjoy being part of the land as far as anyone can be. I think, uh, can be, I think, who is part of contemporary society. We've had our action anxious moments. Dorothea Thea McKellar's flooding rains have been a bit few and far between, but all our tanks are full and we have plenty to take us through six months of summer. The droughts are more evident and over summer it's not unusual to go three months or more with little or no rain. For example, between early December 2007 and April, late April 2008, we had a total of 15 millimetres, which is just over half an inch of rain in that entire period. However, um, we got by. McKellar does mention the beauty and the terror, and I guess she's referring to bushfires, the potential for which are ever present during the summer months. We experienced our first fire in December 2006, and although it did not enter our property, it got close enough to be interesting. We are surrounded by scrub, mainly eucalyptus and wattle, but with an understory of wild feral lavender, which we're doing our best to contain, at least around, from around the house, and you'll know if you know anything about lavender, it's got oil in the leaves and it burns quite fiercely. Um, and so it's, it is quite a fire danger. But the, immediate, uh, but the area immediately around the house is clear. We do have a sprinkler system powered by a petrol driven pump and we have a fire plan. But of course, as was demonstrated earlier this year, you have to expect the unexpected, especially on 40 degree days with a strong northerly coming in from the stony desert. But we have got down to earth, at least metaphorically. We now feel part of the landscape. We take pleasure in simply watching the chuffs, the wagtails, the rosellas, the bee eaters, the magpies, even the crows. We see the occasional wedge tail riding the thermals, always with a smaller bird flapping around it, trying to harrow it away from its territory. We experience the stillness of a summer noon with the cicadas singing in the scrub and the distant chortle of the peaceful dove the quintessential sound of the bush. The frost on the ground of a winter morning, the ice on the car windscreen, and the mist obscuring the view of the ridge across the valley. The occasional small group of roos graze in the scrub, a safe distance from the house, and keeping a wary eye on us interlopers. This is country Australia. This is the earth. We love it. 